it in. It's gin. I thought I'd do something different. <laughs> a bit of a romantic conversation we can have tonight. <laughs> no, um, you know, I just thought, uh, first of all, there is a reason for doing this video. Um, you know, at a glance, uh, Global Health is up on the website, Pole Shift News, if you want to have a look at that. Uh, we've had, I think, a noticeable amount of increase in muons uh, compared to last week. But, you know, this is why we're doing what we're doing this, because we've got an archive, we can keep going back and seeing, you know, what is increasing and what is not. Um, but, you know, I just fancied, you know, discussing uh, with some of you guys, you know, you know, just what's going on right now uh, around the world. Um, you might have noticed uh, in the week I was talking about a quarter of a million people possibly getting evicted from their homes uh, this weekend. That's been extended now till September. So at least for now, uh, they've still got roofs over their heads and the government are refusing landlords to put these cases into court. But I think the inevitable will happen and, you know, it's going to be a real shame because by no fault of their own are they going to lose their properties. And when you're talking about a quarter of a million people, that's not a small amount of people, is it? That's quite a lot. And, you know, both parties in a lot of these relationships have lost their jobs, been made redundant or laid off or, you know, been told they've got to work for a considerable lot less than what they was on originally. You know, you can't help but think, is COVID-19 uh, the straw that has broke the camel's back? And if you remember at the beginning of the year, uh, the Bank of England came out themselves and said, this could be uh, the route to seeing half the world's wealth lost. And I think it's right. And I think that probably 95% of the global population, especially in these first world countries like ours here in the UK, America, Australia, New Zealand and most European countries, I think that the majority of the people are just hoping that it's going to get better. But if you just do some simple maths, you'll know that that's not going to be the case. And if the governments don't change dramatically what they're doing now, then, you know, we could bankrupt the whole world over this. And that, I really believe, is a real possibility based on what I've seen take place in the last five or so months here in the UK. So, you know, on top of all the other things as well, like what we've got going on with the climate, going completely bonkers because of extra cosmic rays in the atmosphere, in the jet streams, and, you know, uh, changing the seasons, uh, which farmers rely on, you know, causing them now to become gamblers. You know, do we just go with gut instinct and put the crops in now? Because that's what happened here in the UK and it didn't work out too well for them. They managed to get 50% of the crops in the ground and only 50% uh, of the crops they did put in the ground came back out, uh, but yet low yields. So, you know, they probably ended up with about 25% of their annual crop that they would normally have at this point in time, which is not going to pay, like I said, for a New Holland combine harvester at the cost of over a million pound. So we're going to start seeing farmers losing land here in the UK, as we have done around the rest of the world. And, you know, if you imagine being on the bottom of the ladder and the ladder slowly being submerged into the water, when we started seeing these um, farmers in India and Pakistan uh, commit suicide because they'd lost their inheritance, that land that had been passed on from generation to generation and this they were the one that ended up losing it to banks and uh, you know loan sharks and other other methods of borrowing or just through just constantly producing low yields uh, not being able to afford you know the running costs of the farm they committed suicide and I, I believe that this is going to be something that we are going to start to see in this uh, in, the, in the third world countries like you know ours and I think it's only a matter of time we probably are not hearing about it that's the probably the real case um, I don't trust the government ONS report which is the government statistics national uh, you know the statistics for the national 
country on what's going on with deaths, uh, people in jobs and things like that. I don't believe that they do put the correct amount of uh, suicides in there because it would, you know, it would reflect on how bad the governments are actually running the country and how miserable they are making people. It's just one of those things. I managed to slip through pretty much every hole of assistance that there was to anyone. Um, that, so most people uh, that were self-employed who had businesses managed to get some government assistance, but I just managed to be the unfortunate one that couldn't fall into any category to be successful in getting some extra funding for our observatory. And, uh, you know, it pisses you off because... Uh, you know, I'm like everybody else, I pay taxes. So, you know, I just don't like this, uh, the way they work it out, that certain people get it and that others don't, and I don't think it's fair. I think if you're going to give, you know, assistance out, it should be for everyone. And obviously, yeah, at some level, it should be probably means tested. But, you know, it, it, it's quirky the way they do things, isn't it? So... I think there's a lot of trouble coming for, you know, and I think that, you know, if we just look at what's going on on, on YouTube uh, with a lot of people, what they're telling people to do, prepare, get your own food supply ready and this, that and the other. I don't know whether they've, you know, some of these people that actually come out with these things have actually thought things through. Um, I mean, it's okay. It is okay. There's nothing wrong with growing your own food in your garden. But let's face it. It's never going to be sustainable. You're never going to be able to grow the multitude of crops that you were used to buying in the shop. So, you know, the other thing is as well, is if, if a situation does occur, do you not think all your neighbours are going to pinch you out your garden and gang up on you? Do you remember the film uh, Grid Down? There was a classic example of how people react. You know, um, you know they pinched the, the English version of it. This guy had a generator and food, and then it wasn't long before they pinched his generator, and then they came into his house through supplies and took him off him and beat him up. And that is exactly how people would react. What, what a lot of us don't uh, understand is that these are predators that we live with, and it's okay in a normal situation, like, you know, it is just barely at the moment, but when they turn, you know, they will pull you apart, literally rip you to bits, for anything that you have and you don't want to be one of those that have when there's so many people that have not trust me because they will turn on you um, you know I hear a lot of people uh, saying put put money in cryptocurrencies but if we have a grid down situation and the internet isn't accessible what good is that cryptocurrency to you and then we've got people that say you know put it in precious metals okay so I mean I'm not fortunate to have, uh, you know, any money to put into precious metals. But if you've got precious metals and you've told someone that you've got them now, trust me, in a time and situation where, you know, the only thing that can be purchased is with precious metals, a thousand people will know that you've got it. And, you know, I've heard people burying it in the gardens, you know, and it's for, there for a rainy day. You know, it's, it's, I just don't think any of these scenarios that people have planned for will play out for them. I know a lot of people are heavily armed with you know, assault rifles in some countries, pistols um, in countries where you're not allowed to have them. They have not uh, you know, uh, decided not to protect themselves with something. They've used their heads and gone for bows, you know, compound bows and um, uh, crossbows and you know, medieval weapons. <laughs> swords and axes I just you know I mean even things like that items like that would be desirable in a crunch time situation I think um, I think the best thing to do is what I noticed at the beginning of this uh, you know this Covid lockdown we was going for a walk and I just noticed fruit trees um, you know, like wild garlic and things like that, and, and plants and species that could be eaten, even fruit, you know, and, and pears and apples. And I also noticed where particular animals are, because uh, we live out here in a bit of a rural country, but 
those those are the things um, I think would be more beneficial. For one, you're not carrying anything with you so that people can't take it off you. And you know, the thing that they can't take off you is your skills that you've learned and your knowledge of your own area. Or maybe just adding that to your itinerary. You know, you, you know the, I suppose there is that. The more things you've got to fall back on, uh, the more chance you've got of, you know, getting through some hard times. But we don't know how long these hard times could last. You know, it could be the end of modern civilization. You know, if the grid went down uh, through people not going to work or the global economic system collapsing, I mean, how are people going to feel uh, that have worked all their lives for retirement, pensions and things like that, and then to be told that they aren't going to get them? They're going to get whatever the government at that point can afford to give out to them. Other than that, they've got to fend for themselves. That, I think, would be the worst situation that anyone could possibly imagine, but it's not like it's not a real possibility. Just because we have been probably used to, you know, um, the luxuries of having a normalised system for as long as we have, and we have been fortunate here in these uh, Western countries to have it a little bit better than others, um, because even in some parts of the world today, it is very basic living, and you know people are much more grateful than us uh, for a lot smaller things. <coughs> so, you know there is a lot of scenarios, and oh my God, some of the adverts now that are appearing on YouTube just drive me absolutely crazy, and I, I know you guys have to su suffer watching a few of these. Um, because our channel is monetized. Another thing about that is that YouTube are going to be putting announcements on videos shortly to let you know that they're monetized. I don't know why they're having to do that, but this is something else that's coming along in the not too distant future. But yeah, in, in general, it isn't very good. The climate is bad, and I think it's bad for a lot of people, unless you're fortunate to be, you know, one of the 5% that have got, you know, plenty of funds, plenty of these uh, contingency plans in place and you know you'll be okay for I believe a short while till the 90% catch up with you <laughs> because I mean you just know how the majority of the people think they are in some respects very stupid um, they've got to be uh, to start with to put up with as much as what they have done already with the propaganda. It's obvious that everything is rigged in this day and age and not rigged in the majority of the people's favour. And this is a, you know, this is um, a modern behaviour which is going to destroy everything eventually because it's, it's almost got to that point now where the only way you can do a little bit better for yourself is not if you work three jobs. It's that if you do something dodgy, you can manage to get by a little bit better. But eventually when everyone is a little bit more dodgy, the whole place will become that corrupt. Uh, it will be not a very nice place to live. But this is what is being uh, set as precedence for human behaviour, I believe. This is why the majority of people that are dodgy now, you know, and, and doing dodgy things, are where they are right now, and that's why we're, we're seeing these things now. I just don't see uh, things getting any better, and the reason for that is if we just look at the UK, for instance, we've had COVID-19 lockdowns and rules and regulations imposed on us now for eight months, and we've probably only just about got 600,000 people through COVID-19 that have been infected or have died or, you know, uh, recovered. So if it took eight months to get 600,000 people to this point, then we've got a lot of years ahead of us uh, with the problem of COVID-19. I think it has been uh, designed and manipulated for this purpose to strip away all those human rights that we're going to lose uh, and have lost already. And if you just imagine... Uh, it's taken 
eight months in this country to get that small number and we've got a population of 60 million there is years and years of this to play out and it will do I think it would be good to, you know, have a more optimistic outlook on things. But the reality, and I think you guys understand this, you know, if you've been watching a lot of the similar videos that I've been watching and you know what attitudes are getting like at the moment, you know that the reality is it is going to go uh, in the direction of somewhere unpleasant for all of us. And we also know that the majority of people haven't got to the point where they are prepared to say, that is it, that was the last straw, I am now going out protesting. And even if we do go out protesting, you know, look how good COVID-19 plays a perfect part in stopping people doing that because you're not allowed to social um, distance with people. So large groups are not allowed so what does that mean, you know, in this country, groups of 30 or more get now a £10,000 fine? Uh, the organiser of these events do. So that means they have got no opposition. They can get away with pretty much blue murder now. And, um, you know, this, like I say, could be the straw that broke the camel's back. God knows where it will end up um, in two or three years' time. I can see a massive recession coming out of this. Uh, the GDP is at ridiculous levels uh, here in the UK. I know um, it's the same for America, Australia and everywhere else. And I know um, that there's a lot of businesses just hanging in there, you know, and I can't give them financial advice, these people. And my, but what I would do in their situation is just cut my losses until uh, we at least see... Uh, the other side of this getting better but at the moment now it's not we've not reached equilibrium at 600,000 people here in the UK I know the figures are similar for every other country but you know you've got to be realistic um, you either pull out now with a bit in your pocket or you lose the lot and you know losing the lot could mean that you end up on the street you know losing completely the lot and that's probably when you'll lose it <laughs> It's crazy, guys. We're going to face a lot more hardships, all of us are. Um, it's just um, a matter of, you know, watching and see it take place. And we're, I believe we're going to see some really shocking things over the next six, seven months that is going to surprise a lot of us. I just think, you know, we've got to try and help each other as much as possible in times like this. You know, remain human and, uh, you know, just pray to God that we get through this because none of us have ever seen um, in this modern existence that we're in right now such a thing as a pandemic sweep across the world. Whether it is purposely done, whether the actual thing is just a common cold, badged up as COVID-19 or what, it doesn't really matter because the uh, rules and regulations that are in place are the things that are destroying people's lives right now. And that is real. So, you know, just be safe out there, guys. And, you know, when you fall back, fall back uh, to, you know, as many people as you possibly can. You know, try and keep the strength in numbers. You know, fall back on your community fall back to your you know neighbors and fall back to your families and then fall back to you know your immediate household if you have to always try and maintain numbers um, i know that this pandemic is seen about the uh, complete opposite of this it's it's fracturing towns cities destroying national economies 
it's not going to be easy for a lot of people. So guys, remember, uh, I'll end the video here. Um, you know, I just thought I'd light some candles for you guys, just a special <laughs> for you guys. But um, remember, uh, if you want to go over to the website, poleshiftnews.com, we've put at a glance uh, the World Health up there, all the information that was gathered today. Um, it's still the same as last week's with regards to the magnetic North Pole position. That's because I'm not going to be popping the SD card at the magnetosphere and the Trimax system every week. It's just crazy to do that. I want to leave that as it is. We'll update that every month and we'll just keep the figures there so that you can see that there is some progression if you just want to go straight to that for your data. Um, like I said, there's a few more muons. Another uh, active volcano has come on the scene in the last week. Um, a 6.1 earthquake off the top of made in Papua New Guinea. Um, what else? I won't tell you, I'll let you go and see for yourselves. There's a link down there if you want to help support what we do at the observatory. And other than that guys, you have a good evening. And don't worry about things too much. I'll be back at some point later this week. As always, bye for now.